Hi, this is Jim. I'm standing here in the Los Trampas Regional Wilderness Area, which is just west of Danville, California. And it's this wonderful area for hiking and seeing nature. And besides the Los Trampas area, we have the adjoining property, which is a giant watershed uh, managed by the East Bay Municipal Water District. And if you go online and get an East Bay Mud Trail Permit, you can hike from Danville all the way over to Oakland or from San Ramon all the way to Lafayette, completely an open countryside. So it's an amazing resource. We're really fortunate to have it right here in the middle of the San Francisco Bay Area. One thing you're not going to find here in Los Trampas is a lot of flat ground. Los Trampas is very hilly and one of the consequences of that is if you take the time to climb up to one of the ridges, you'll see some of the most amazing views in the Bay Area. You can see on clear days, you can see from the Sierras all the way over to past the Golden Gate out. Sometimes I've seen the Farallons all from this uh, wonderful area. The, the reason for all these nice ridges is that Las Trampas is in a very geologically active area. And um, Las Trampas finds itself between two major earthquake faults. Over on the east side, we've got the Calaveras Fault, which runs through western Danville and goes on north. And over on the uh, East Bay Mud side of things, we've got the Hayward Fault. It goes through Hayward, Oakland, and on up north as well. When those two faults are going apart, this area has sunk in the past. And when the faults come together, the area climbs up. And that's the situation we find ourselves in right now. This area is being very actively compressed, giving rise to a lot of very interesting geology. So the purpose of this video is to give you an overview of the geology of the area, as best I understand it. And then to give you a, a number of specific things you can look for when you're hiking around here where to find marine fossils, which kids really like finding fossils, um, find where to find old stream beds, and to find evidence of how the different parts of the um, land were folded and created the structures we see today. So at present, this area is being compressed from both sides. And the way in which the land absorbs all the compression is different on the two sides of Los Trampas. Over on the east side, on the Danville side, when the ground was compressed, it basically folded like sort of a piece of carpet being pushed on both sides. And it became steeper and steeper and steeper until it ended up making a dome structure, all made out of rock and sediment. And then more recently, the top of the dome has collapsed. And so what you find as you're walking along the Danville side of the park is you'll find these parallel ridges sticking up at sort of opposite angles. And in one place, the collapse of the dome was so recent that we can find the rocks that fell down into the, the crest of the dome are still there and still visible. Of course, they're being eroded away and they won't be there for long, but right now you can still walk along what used to be the top of the dome and it's now collapsed like an old cathedral. Over on the west side, the ground was also compressed, but it reacted in a different way. Instead of bending, one part shot up over the other. It's another kind of fault. And it created a situation where we have the same kind of rock, but on top of each other. It's called the Bollinger Overthrust Fault. And so it's climbed up about a thousand feet now. And so the ridge with the antenna on it, which probably has the best views, is the very crest of that thrusted sediment. And you'll find the same kind of sediments at the top of both ridges, but the way in which the structures were formed was different. So now, where did all of this soil and the rocks and the, the fossils we find on the ridge come from? So back about four and a half million years ago, the paths of the faults in this area were different and the area was actually being stretched and the land sank and it sank well below sea level. If you want to imagine what that's like, just look at the south part of the San Francisco Bay. That area is being stretched apart because the San Andreas and Hayward faults that bracket that area are diverging. And so the whole area has sunk a couple miles and once it got below sea level, it fills with water and then all sorts of sediment comes in from the local streams and rivers. 
So imagine that same situation here at Los Trampas, but back four and a half million years ago. So the land sank down below sea level, and this was an inland sea. And it was very rich in marine life, animals and plants, and all sorts of uh, shelled animals like clams and scallops and abalones were living right here on the, the, the shallow parts of the um, inland sea. Over on this side, there were giant sand dunes. You can imagine them pretty similar to what you see today in, in Point Reyes. And so um, that was a, a relatively stable situation for quite a while, but the sea level was constantly changing, partly because sea level itself changes and partly because the land you know, rises and falls. So sometimes the water, when it was high, was farther over that way. The marine sediments were laid down over there. Sometimes when the water level was low, you know, the marine sediments were laid down here. So you have sort of alternating layers of sand and these nice beds of shells that um, are scattered around this area. But that whole, end, whole marine and sand layer ended up then sinking when the land stretched further apart. And all sorts of soft sediments filled in from local streams and rivers, you know, basically burying it, squishing it, and turning the sand into sandstone and compressing the shells so that you know, frequently they're all bunched up against each other. After the marine sediments were buried under thousands of feet of sediment, the compressive period we're in now started, and of course these were lifted up. The soft sediments that were on top never got formed into rock, and that's this clay-like soil which I'm standing on, and which is the soft material that's busy flowing down these hills very slowly. There's a lot of visible landslide areas in the park, um, particularly along the paved trail that goes up to the antenna, you'll be walking over a giant landslide of this very soft clay type of soil that essentially turns to mud when it gets wet. I don't know whether you can see it from the camera, but back behind me is a feral cat hunting gophers right now. There's a lot of wildlife in the, in the park. Uh, we've seen wild pigs, lots of coyotes, I'm sure they're bobcats, lots of turkeys, and uh, it's just a fun place to be. So let's talk about things we can find here in the park. The things kids seem to get the most out of is finding fossils. The most obvious spot to find the fossils is up along the crest of the ridges because that's where the sandstone is, is sticking out, exposed. But a lot of times it's all covered over with lichens and it's been oxidized, so it's sort of hard to see the fossils. So frequently the best place to actually see the deposits is where the grater that maintains the fire roads here is actually scraped off the rocks. And you'll see these very pretty, um, just encrusted um, deposits with shells. Um, if you're not quite up to climbing to the top of the ridge, there's a couple locations where the ridge is broken off and these fossil rich rocks have rolled down the hill and they're um, just easy to walk over and find. So about a third of the way up the paved um, road which goes from the Bollinger staging area up to the antenna, if you just look over to the north you'll see some rocks and you go examine them you'll see that they're rich with fossils. Um, there's a similar area if you take the path towards the um, southeastern corner of the ridge. Now, when you're over there, a good thing to look for is gravel beds sticking out of the hill. And these are old stream beds. It used to be the sediment and rocks that were flowing into this area when it was low. Those were the streams that were feeding the sediment into the area. Now, of course, they've been lifted up like all the other rocks, but you can still find those old gravels in a couple of locations. It's pretty exciting. And don't miss that collapsed dome up on the, the eastern ridge. You'll have to walk along the trail to sort of the middle port facing Danville, and that's a pretty spectacular find. Well, that concludes this video. I, I hope you've enjoyed it, and by all means, uh, come out to Los Trampas, bring your hiking boots and maybe a walking stick. Be sure to bring plenty of water because you're going to get some exercise and find this amazing place for hiking and, and viewing nature. Thanks very much.